So it's kind of interesting for me. My name's Bob Brown, and um, it's interesting for me in that this is my first Drupal camp. I'm fairly new to Drupal, and, um, and but this is an interesting topic. I actually set it up. I, I, I came in and I typed in, um, it said, create session ideas. I thought, that's a great idea. We ought to have somebody talk about that. And so I, I put that down, and, um, and, and when I, when I, later on, in the, like the day before yesterday, I, I mentioned to somebody, I says, well, who's going to teach this thing? And they said, well, it's going to be you. you. You created it. I said, I didn't know I realized that. So I said, okay, this could be fun. So, um, so I am new to Drupal, and so those of you that might be Drupal experts, feel free to jump in and correct me where I'm wrong. Um, but a lot of what I'm going to be talking about is not Drupal itself, but about the 960 grid. So basically, the 960 grid was uh, created so you could do prototyping. I really, uh, the author of it um, said that uh, he just wanted a way to quickly be able to, to develop sites and put things together in a quick fashion uh, without having to, to, to work with, uh, you know, some of the details of trying to work with CSS. And, uh, and so that's kind of cool. And, and one of the reasons we chose 960 is because you see all those numbers up there, you know, 960 is divisible by 2, 4, 5, 6, 120, 100. 240, and so it makes for a nice division for dividing up a site. And so I, I think there's a lot of discussion and arguments about um, whether to use a grid or not, and I'll talk about that in a second. But for me, the idea was I needed something quick. Um, I got introduced, introduced to Drupal and, 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 and had to create a site, and I needed a quick way to put something together as, as a theme, and this proved to be one of the fastest ways for me to do that. So, you know, there are the usual wars, the Emacs versus VI, Windows, uh, Linux, Macs, PC, and so forth. Um, and there seems to be this, this discussion about CSS versus grids. Um, I, I guess one camp says, you know, I don't want to use grids because, um, because I don't really know what's going on underneath um, the, the whole thing and how it's all set up. And, and other people saying, of course, I want to use grids because it's fast. Um, and I just think of it as a tool. Uh, so, um, uh, so it's kind of neat because it has these, these, these benefits, you know, it does rapidly speed up development. Um, it gives you a good clean structure for creating grids. You don't have to know a whole lot about CSS. Now there's a lot of teaching that says, you know, you should learn a lot. And I think I agree with that. You should learn all you can about CSS if you're going to be doing any website development or not. But you could literally with, uh, with just some of the basics of CSS and, and, and having the grid could put together a very nice, uh, very nice site without having to, uh, resort to the old style tables and and um, and 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 font commands and and so forth. Um, and one of the nice things about it that I liked about it that really caused challenges for me in, in CSS is all the browser inconsistencies. How do we you know how do you work with uh, the special problems with uh, IE6 um, uh, in particular and 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 how do we work around those and what do we do about you know the fact that one browser puts the lists at, uh, at one position and puts the other browser puts it in a different position and so forth and so the grid in the way it's set up and in in, in, in in by using the uh, Eric Riemeyer reset code actually takes care of a lot of the browser inconsistencies so we don't have to deal with that a whole lot. Um, it's fairly lightweight. Um, that's one of the complaints, of perhaps, about um, the grid is you're adding a lot of CSS code, and so it's going to take time to load. But it turns out it's only maybe three to four kilobytes of, of code, and you can compress that down. Uh, and you can certainly uh, reduce it if you, if you wanted to go in and, and delete some of, the, some of the features or pieces that you didn't want to use. And basically, it allows you to build some fairly complex layouts quickly. So those are the pros, the cons. Um, the big one, I think, is it's named 960 for a reason. If, you know, if you don't want your width to be 960, well, <laughs> you're kind of stuck. Um, but it's nice that I think today pretty much uh, most systems are, uh, can support 1024 by 768, and so um, and so that's typically 960 is a is a very good width for that, and so that works very well. And if you want, there's actually um, a 960 fluid grid that you could look at as well. And, and that would work. You do lose a little bit of flexibility uh, in, in how you can do things or how you want to do it. And perhaps the biggest complaint I often hear is that, well, gee, I didn't create it. You know, it wasn't built here. So, um, uh, and and, and the, I think the concern is that. So when I do something or if I make a change, since I don't, I didn't build it. I don't know exactly how it all works. Um, I kind of liken that to you know flipping on a light switch. It's just a tool. Um, I don't necessarily have to know how the atoms are split at the uh, nuclear power plant and how I get my electricity um, in order to do what I need to do. So I'm going to take a look at some examples of some 960 grid pages.
I was just telling uh, the, the previous speakers, it seems like everybody here's got like an apple, and I feel like I'm this one guy with a PC on the, on the presentations. Kind of interesting. www.960.gs. So that's the site you actually go to to download the stuff we're going to download. Uh, and on this page, it's kind of neat, he's got a bunch of example uh, websites that have been put together with the grid, so you can see. And if you come to the site, you can actually see, he, you, you click on this little link here, and you can see that he overlays the grid on top of it, so you can see how the sites are actually laid out and they actually fit into the 960. And so you can go through several of these. Uh, but you see, these are, are very nice looking websites put together quite well. The, they're visually appealing. Um, and again, because of, 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 of using the grid, they're able to build them fairly fast. You'll also notice that there are basically two types, and there's the 12 column, and then there's a 16 column. So you'll actually be able to decide whether you want to build in a 12 column or a 16 column grid. And so I'll let you go uh, at your own time and come back and browse through some of these other pages and maybe even go to their websites and see how they're put together, but uh, basically just wanted to quickly show you a couple of sites. It's 960.gs, right there. And the download also comes from there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download that into a page and we're gonna actually start building something a little bit here. And uh, so I'm going to this download link. Um, I'm gonna copy the link address and then I've got a little SSH shell over here um, at some place. Um, this is a, this is a offsite uh, web server. And I'll make a directory, let's call it foo, and I use wget to download. There's my zip file, and then I simply unzip the file, unzip 960 download, and you see it inflates all these files into a directory called 960 download. Okay, so if we go into 960 download, you'll see there's several files here. Um, and basically, you know, this is the usual stuff. You've got a readme file to explain how all that works, and I guess we pretty much don't need that. And we've got a bunch of sketch sheets. You could actually print this out, and and uh, you can handwrite, you know, kind of hand draw out your, uh, what your site's going to look like in terms of your layout, um, because it's just that bar, those grids, so you can draw on it and, and kind of get a good uh, a way to draw that out. And also, if you use other programs, Fireworks, Illustrator, Dreamweaver, things like that, there are other files they have available to you that you can actually load into those and, and actually have it show as a background as you're developing so you can ensure that you're getting the right sizes and the right widths and you can kind of, kind of count up the number of columns and so forth. It's kind of neat. But pretty much in the two licenses, the GPL and the MIT, but pretty much what we want is all in this directory called code. Here there's a demo.html. I'm going to go ahead and um, move this out. Well, let's see. I guess I can keep the path if I can remember it. Um, Guess I need a domain. <coughs> and demo.html. So this is the uh, demo file that they actually put together so that you can look at. And it shows here, again, this little background you can actually put into your website as, as you're building it. And it shows these 12 columns here so you can kind of cross. But there's several things to note. As, as you're looking at this. Um, it, this particular grid will show you, you know, here's 60, this, this, the, the, the basic column width is 60 pixels for single column, or if you chose, for instance, uh, four columns over here, it'd be 300 pixels. Uh, but they add up to, when they come from front to end, to 960. There is here on the left-hand side a 10 pixel margin, and on the right-hand side, there's also a 10 pixel margin there by default. And uh, in between then, there's at be before and, each after and after each column, there's 10 pixels. So in between, the, the gutter space is 20 pixels. And I guess that's one of the primary differences between this grid system and, say, Blueprint, and in terms of how, how much space it's using and how it utilizes the grid space. So. This is a good sheet to print out uh, uh, again if you want to know the widths, or if you're building a pic, uh, uh, if you, you know if you're building a uh, uh, an image or something you want to fit exactly into the space, you'll know how wide it should be and how it should work. Okay, so we're going to create a layout. Is our goal here, and um, 
Why don't we, we'll do it this way. And then what I've got up here in the top section, so I'm going to have a container. That's the blue area out here. Or I'll create a header section. And in the header, we'll split it into two halves here where we'll have a logo and a slogan. Uh, underneath, uh, we, we'll create a menu bar. And then we'll have a, a left sidebar, a middle content place, a right sidebar. And we'll have a footer space. So that's kind of what we're going to build here as a layout. So I'm going to go back to demo.html, and um, let's make a copy of that. And open it up, and we can see kind of how the process goes. Oh, I guess one of the things I didn't really discuss is um, if we go back here and look in, in the directory, um, so there's there's image here. That's where those column those column gifs are that we can uh, put in the background. Um, but probably the most important thing for us is the uh, CSS files that we're going to be involved with. And so there's a 960 CSS um, which contains the code for the grid itself. There's a reset.css which is the Eric Meyer reset um, code for um, initializing your your CSS, and then just some some text CSS to initialize some of your some of your initial setups. The, these here are compressed. If you actually open them up and look at them, you can see that they're already compressed. Um, and so oftentimes I'll take the uncompressed directory and move that up into the area so I can actually work with it and deal with it, and then you can recompress them later. But basically, what you're taking from the site once you download and you're putting on your site, the the, the primary things you really want are these three files, uh, the CSS files. I'm cheating a little bit here. I'm going to start with the demo.html file. Um, and we can see how it's set up. So we got a doc type, a meta tag. And then here we've included each of the CSS um, files for the reset. They've also included all of the, uh, the tags here in the, in the style. I'm going to go ahead and put those into a separate file. Except I've lost my mouse. Oh no, network software connection abort. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to reconnect. My apologies. Um, I guess that's the other thing that's cool about the Mac. You guys all able to install it on there, and I haven't done a PC install, and so I'm always working offline. Okay, so back to there. We're back. Okay, and it was full and 960 download and code. Okay, here we are again. So I'm going to take this code and basically put it in a style sheet separate. So we'll put that in CSS styles, styles t y l e s dot CSS. Um, I'm going to do a 12 container, so we don't need that particularly. And I'm going to get rid of the um, background color. And that must be about gray, so that's okay. All right. So we've gotten rid of the styles and placed them into styles.css. And then I'm basically going to get rid of pretty much everything I don't need here, um, all the other stuff that's here, and we're going to build it from scratch. So I'll start here. Get rid of it all the way down to the end. So here we go. So the first command, or the first thing that you can, can set up is there's a class called container. And, um, and so the container class, you'll, you'll either say container 12 or container 16, and that determines how many columns will be appearing on the page. And so we'll just go ahead and div and, and do that. And then we're going to create our header. Um, 
the way this works is you can say grid grid underscore one through twelve, and that will de that will determine exactly how wide um, this particular column is going to be that you can display on the page. And so I'm starting with grid twelve, and we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll put some text there. We'll just say um, header for now. And we won't do this for each one, but um, I'm going to leave the clear out for a moment and come back to that. And okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like now. Back on the browser, and so there you see, twelve grid ride, one one single, um, one single, one single column. And what's interesting about that, though, is if we actually went in here and say I put a word up here, say um, container, and reloaded that. Oh, I take it back. It's not there. It's supposed to put the grid in the background, and apparently it's not doing that at the moment, so let me go fix that. I'm sorry, say again? I'm missing an MDiv, okay. Could be. Oh, you know, yeah. That's it. Then, well, I don't know if that's it. But, uh, <laughs> could be. Let's find out. Yeah, I didn't think so. I think I deleted the background, actually, is what happened. Um, so, if you go back to the styles, CSS styles. And in the top here, I had originally it said background. URL and it should be um, was it IMG or images IMG slash um, yeah I should have looked it up too what's cool about computers you can always go back and look it up again all right and it's called 12 call gif Twelve call GIF. See if that fixes things any better. Oh, that's not good. All right, I'll move back. I'll come back to that in a minute. In the meantime, let's um, continue on building the page a little bit. And um, so our goal was then we've got that, and then the next section is we wanted to create. We wanted to create for ourselves a. Um, we want to create for ourselves uh, the, the middle section, so we're going to uh, div, and we can say class equals um, grid, and let's say we do it uh, 4, 5, and 3, so class 4, um, and so this will be the um, left, and div, class equals grid 5 and this will be content I'm sorry say again oh yeah thank you I'm not nervous typing up here in front of millions of people <laughs> and div um, class Um, let me finish this and I'll go back and try that. Class equals grid um, 3. 5 plus 4 plus 3 is 12, right? There we go. And P, and this will be the right, and slash P. I actually have these files. It would be quicker if I just read them in. Okay, so let's take a look at that. And there you go. So you left, and you got content, and you got a right. And so what's interesting, though, um, is as we put in content, then what will happen to the to the columns? So let's put in some real content or some lengthy content. We can go to uh, Lipsum and go steal a few paragraphs over here. So there's five paragraphs. 
Maybe I'll just take three. Copy. And in the content, then um, we'll paste that in. And there's good reason to actually use tags, or use uh, the paragraph tags, or to use some kind of tag on each paragraph because these are a separate block. And uh, when we come back later to apply padding or something like that, you can't apply it really to the container grid box. You'll come, we'll apply the padding to the particular paragraph or to the particular block that's in question. And so, so you should definitely um, put some kind of tag around uh, whatever content that you have. So back again, and now you see there's these columns come out like this. So while we're doing this, okay, we're going to go fix the uh, styles. Uh, CSS styles. Okay, you're saying I need to go up like that. There you go. Okay. And then that leaves us just the footer at the bottom. And so we'll say div class equals grid 12. And p footer slash p. OK. So there's a basic layout then we've already we've, we've, we've put together. There are some issues to, to deal with, and I think I put them in my PowerPoint. So let's pull that back up again. Um, oh, right. OK, so a couple of things. First of all, um, if I were to go in and one of the things I might want to do is if I were to if I were to put some if I were to put another um, another field over here on the left that wasn't the width the full width of twelve but maybe it was shorter maybe it was three instead of dropping down here it's going to drop up into this area let's try that and see see that so I say div class equals grid three extra and so you see it popped up over here into the right hand side and probably that's not that's not exactly what we wanted to have happen we wanted we would want to keep this space down here open and available to bring down the the left and right menu and then have the footer completely on the bottom by itself and and the extra should have shown up here on the bottom left so there's several things we need to do one is um, after every full after every full uh, 12 12 columns you should clear the data and what that means is uh, there's a great uh, website if you search for um, flow tutorial uh, on the web um, there's actually a website on how to do um, floating um, when you when you take a div when you take a, a CSS element and float it to the left or float it to the right and, and it's it's pretty good discussion on that but basically what happens is as, as we get towards the right hand edge of, 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 uh, uh, of the grid is that that in memory is still kept this idea of I'm, I'm still floating and so what we want to do is say no I'm done with this particular row or this, pati this particular uh, this particular full row and so I want to tell it to, to clear and, and in CSS you would, you, you, would, you would do some things but in, in using this grid all I have to say is one command and that would be div um, class equals clear and that takes care of it for me so after that 12 I would want to do it and then after this next block of 12, before the extra, I would want to do it. And if I do that, let's see what happens to the page now. Didn't close my clear tag. Uh, you're right. Did I close the other one? <laughs> uh, clear. 
it's kind of cool having people who know all this stuff and can help me out. Sorry, I don't know if you go on. <laughs> and there we go. And you'll see then down here at the bottom, um, the extra falls into the place where it was actually supposed to fall. Okay, so that's one of the things you need to do. The other thing that's kind of interesting is what happens if we have, um, if we actually were to drop in some, um, Uh, there's no okay. Let me, before we go to that, let me finish up the middle section here. In this, in, the, in this left, in this middle, in this right, and yeah, we, the other thing we can do to ensure that it'll behave the, it'll behave the way we want it to properly is we can actually enclose the whole thing inside of a div itself. So we can actually have divs within divs. And so this is how we're going to fix the top section where we're going to have the logo on the left and the and the slogan on the right is by coming here. We're going to say um, we can say div class equals grid. 12. And so um, I'm not going to bother pushing all those over, but we'll come to the bottom here. Oh, I don't need the extra anymore. And there's a closed div there for that whole class. And so now the whole thing is actually enclosed in a div as well. And so let's see what happens when we apply that. And we've lost the right hand edge. You see that? Not only have we lost the right hand edge, but it looks like, as you look over here on, the, uh, on a couple of these, that um, it's no longer sitting over on the very left edge. And so they have a fix for that. And basically, what's that same, there's always that column. Remember that we had that 10 pixel, um, we had that 10 pixel margin on the left hand side. And what we do is we have to say we need to get rid of it now in order to be able to fit all this content there. And so what we're going to do is, is they have a special command for that. And that command is for the first element. You just add to the class, so you can have multiple values in a class. You just say alpha. And then in the um, bottom element, in the, in the, in the right um, piece, we will add also, there's a class called omega. And that should theoretically fix what we've done. I should get rid of that container at the top. Container. And I still got something weird with my header, but we'll come back to that. Um, and this isn't clear yet. I must have an open div somewhere. Uh, I'm sorry. 12 grid on my left tag. I don't understand. Okay, the, the big, um, this, oh, this one here. Container that you added, you added it after your header. Oh. But you added the alpha class to the header, which is outside of it. This is the header. Is that, is that how it's supposed to be? One all the way across, that's okay. And then these should be in. I'm just saying because the, the alpha class is outside of the Oh, I'm on the wrong container. I'm in the wrong container. I'm on the wrong one. Oh. I see. Okay. It's not on the header. <laughs> it's on this one down here. Right? It's on the left. Alpha. Right? It's the first element of the of the of the nested of the nested value. So let's try that, see if that fixed it. There we go. That looks better. I still got something weird with the header, but header. Div class twelve container. I'm in a container, I'm in a grid. I close the header. Darn, that looks good. Okay, I don't know. Um, so the other thing I wanted to kind of show while we're doing this then was um, what happens if we actually put in a real, um, a real file? Um, so I've actually got a file up here. And by real file, I mean if I load up a, uh, a logo and a, and a background image. So I'm going to cheat. XI.
All right, let's see how that looks. And then I'll show you what I changed. See, there's a logo here, and there's a slogan spot up here because I added two more divs. I'll show you what that looks like. That's because he's it. So here we go. Um, there's the grid for the alpha. And what I did is I added an image source right, right here in, 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 uh, inside, of a, inside of a grid for. This is inside my header. So four wide, I've got this grid here. And then for the other eight, I've got the omega. And then I put in this thing. Our slogan goes right here. Um, <clears throat> and actually, I want to pull that out for a moment. And we'll see it. And then below that, I put a whole bar that's 12 wide also, and basically put in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is supposed to represent, say, a menu bar that we talked about that was going to be there. Okay? And so we've got that. Um, and so, again, um, we, we see the logo. And the other thing I wanted to add is I wanted to add in the background, if I wanted to add up here in the header, say, a full image. And so the way we can do that is... I'm going to go to the styles.css. I guess that's in CSS. There we go. And um, in the... Let's see. Demo CSS. Styles. Okay, in the container 12 is where I'm sticking this. Container 12. Um, no, that's not where I'm sticking that. Sorry, wrong thing. Here we go. In the, I'm, yeah, here's, that's what I wanted. Okay, so what we do is a couple things. One is in the styles, in the, in the demo, I'm going to actually create... Um, an ID field, um, and I, so, so one of the things I did, here's an ID field called wrapper um, for the whole container, and then in the header, there's a, now an ID field called header, right? You know the difference between IDs and classes. Classes are, are generic, IDs are specific and unique. Uh, and that's what oftentimes what we want to do is when we want something unique to happen to a particular uh, area, we'll go ahead and, and, and title it as an ID, and that's more specific, and so whatever CSS you add to that um, um, has more specificity. And so here in the header, t we've, so we've created an ID called header, and so now I'm going to add to that header in the style sheet. I'm going to create this uh, header. Um, I'm also going to change the color for the text to be white because the background happens to be black. All right, so now we do that, and we should see an interesting change. And so now you see there's a picture that dropped into place here. Okay, so I have a background picture as my, as my full header, and all this is doing is filling up the entire grid. Notice that one of the things that happens is I have, um, is that the, when you do have an image in there, it fills up to the entire um, size. But actually, if we actually were to look at this particular GIF, we would find that it's actually bigger than this. Um, and, and, and what I had is I have a, I have a little red bar down here, a little, a little below here, and so I've got a problem is that I want this to move down farther. And so I either need to put some spacers in here, or I need to put some kind of image there that will actually push it down. So one of the things I had in here before I removed it a little bit ago was I had this blank dot GIF so that I could go in here and underneath the slogan, or above the slogan, depending on where I want the slogan to end up, I guess, I can just put in an image tag. That's a blank and tells it to basically push down the text. So now the slogan's down below. I could have left it up above. Uh, but now the menu field actually falls on into the, 
into the field. Now you can actually, inside each one of these grids, you can also do absolute positioning. So if you wanted to, if you had a, a grid and you wanted things to be placed in there exactly in specific ways, you could put several objects on top of one another. And so you can essentially design any kind of graphical interface that you really want to design. Okay, that brings us back then to um, here. So we talked about the containers 1216, we talked about grid XX, we talked about clear, we talked about alpha and omega. There are other things. Um, slideshow. Um, in the 960 CSS called prefix, suffix, push and pull, and clear fix. All those things actually, um, I have not used them very often. I've not found a real special need, you know, uh, for most sites to develop. So you can go onto the site and learn about them and read exactly what the code does. But these commands here, the grid, the clear, the alpha, and the omega, and setting the container, pretty much will let you build almost anything. Now, from there then, and here's we, and, and I mentioned then we want to add in the background picture and the logo and how we had to pass, pass down the image. Another way, by the way, we could have done that spacing is we could actually create a div spacer and just give it, you know, a color or transparent or whatever, but just set it a height of some particular height and then actually that spacer then will open up a, a box that wide and that high and again move, move your spaces down. So either, either of those two methods will work. What I want to do now is I want to say we want to create, we want to take this basic layout we have and we want to turn it into a, 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 a Drupal theme. And so in, to do that, First of all, I have a Drupal install, um, and the basic install is it's just a basic straight out of the box install. I've only added one module, I added the Devel module. And in the Devel module, I also added a mod uh, module called Devel Generate. And what Generate does is you can tell it, generate me some text. So we've got some text here, you can, you can see, uh, and taxonomies and things like that. And so this is what uh, the default uh, uh, the data looks like in Garland. And so now we're gonna go and we're gonna create a theme. Okay. So now I'm in the root directory, and so that means the theme will, themes will be created in sites, all themes. And so we'll create a theme called Inspiration. And we go in the inspiration directory. And the first thing that you want to do to create a theme basically is, let me come back here to, uh, not that page, but this page is, um, well, like I said, we generated stuff when we created a directory, is to create something we call an info file. And and, and I, I believe info files um, came in with six, I'm not sure, but, um, But what they allow us to do is, is we can create a minimum info file and have a theme created fairly simply. So I'm in the directory, and one way to get the theme, rather, you know, if you don't remember exactly the syntax and everything, and I don't usually, um, that's why I love being able to look things up elsewhere. Okay, so I2 public, and instead of in sites, under themes, um, there's the Garland theme, I guess. And so there's a garland.info theme, which I'll just copy to this directory, and I'm going to move it and rename it basically to um, move garland to inspiration.info. And I'm going to open that up and modify it. So I don't need the header. There are only four things we really need. And <clears throat> the four basic things you need is you need the name, so inspiration. You need a description. the version, you need the core, uh, which version it is, and you need to tell it what kind of PHP, what kind of template we're going to use. We're going to use the PHP template. And so from here, we've now, <coughs> well, we've now um, created a new theme. So if we go back into our website, and hopefully I'm logged in, we go to administration, We wait patiently. I need a faster host. <laughs> it's 
So after seeing all those Apple presentations, I downloaded Safari, and I was amazed at how fast the page would come up. That was pretty cool. <laughs> okay, and under themes, we'll choose the new theme. So we now have a new theme. We're going to choose Inspiration. I do have my administration theme set as Garland in case it totally messes up things. So we'll still be able to get back to the admin screens. So now if we go to the home page, here's our wonderful new theme. You're going to love it. Ta-da! So there's nothing there, obviously. Um, there's no logo there. And there's <clears throat> and obviously none of the, um, the style sheets seem to apply at this point. So maybe that's our challenge. We need to have uh, something put in place. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a web, a, the page here. And actually, the page we're going to create is the, the page we just created. So we're going to copy um, our, our file that we just had. Uh, copy. Export one, my websites. Who created these long names? Public uh, foo, uh, 960, code. <laughs> Demo, right? In fact, um, we'll do it this way. We'll copy everything from that directory to here. So now in our current directory, we should have that's a mess. Um, I see we have code in the directory below. So I can move everything up. OK, let's take a look at it here. There we go. That looks better. Something didn't move. No, oh, that's OK. All right, so now we have our demo.html. And what we're going to do is we're going to rename that to page.tpl.php. So the way Drupal worked was when we saw that, when we saw it, when we see, when we're looking at this theme right here, what we're looking at is the default theme that's set up, and it's the one that's set, it's the tp, it's the page.tpl.php file that's in the Garland theme directory. Uh, well, that's in the default theme, in the default directory in the modules, because once we switch themes, there was no page file, and so that's the first one it goes to. The next theme it looks for is it looks for the theme, the, the, that particular file in the current directory. So we're, so we're renaming it to that name and telling it that we want it to, to read that. So in theory, I should be able to refresh, and it would appear. And of course, it doesn't. And so the reason is, one, the, the, the biggest reason we actually um, downloaded that cool thing called the Val module is because it has this link on there, which is called empty cache. And so you come over here to empty cache. There it is. And what, what it is is, is, is um, Drupal apparently reads all the files into memory and keeps them in memory. Um, and so that makes things a lot faster. And so when you add a new file to the system, it doesn't know it's there. It's not going to go look it up through the file systems looking for new things. And so you need to tell it, I need to clear the cache. You go back and reread it again. And so after doing that, it should have done that. And we should see a slight difference in our output. Well, it doesn't look exactly like what we had before, but certainly it is different, right? We've got different things in there. We've now got the logo in there. Uh, we now <clears throat> we now see that instead of having the a little while ago we had the text from from the generate code, now we have the text from from that particular TPL file. So we're going to start changing things around just a little bit to make it um, show us some other things. First of all. Um, one of the first changes we can make is to the head section of this page. So we've got these these values here, the CSS reset, the CSS text, and so forth. And, and, and the way that, uh, and, and the place that we can grab the, grab the style sheets from is actually in the .info file. So in the .info file, where is my .info file? There it is. We can add style sheets, S-T-Y-L-E-S-H-E-E-T-S. -E -E and we can choose different media types. So we could say all or print or whatever. Um, but essentially, um, and we just go ahead and list each of the style sheets that we're going to have. So it's going to be CSS, reset.css. Uh, 
and um, text.css and 960.css and styles.css. So we tell that, we put that in the .info file, and over here, then we're going to replace this with the code that typically goes in a in this uh, page.tpl file. So we're we're going to find out what that looks like. And so the place to go is let's go to the root directory, and we're going to go into um, uh, let's, let's steal the one from the Garland theme. So we'll say themes Garland Garland, and uh, it's the info file. No, not the info file. The uh, page tpl.php file. And so up here in the head section, I just took out the entire head and I'm going to replace it here and it looks just like this. I guess I don't need the head. But see how we're going to do a print dollar head and here we're going to do a print dollar head title. So I guess we can get rid of title here. And um, presumably we can get rid of the meta tag. I don't know. And um, print styles. So that's where all the styles will go and print scripts. And I'm not going to worry about this conditional for IE7 at this point in time. And then we get rid of what we had. So there we go. We've made that change. And so we should go back and reload. And nothing happens. Guess what we have to do again? And there's only two times you have to do this, actually, is when you change the .info file and when you put in the new uh, page.tpl.php file. So one more time, empty the cache. And reload. Okay, and so there we go. Now we see the basic uh, setup we had before. And so what we need to do next is is we need to replace the variables in here so that instead of having uh, left here and right here, we have the actual um, stuff that's supposed to be in place, including the content down here, you know, with all its taxonomy and, and other stuff rather than the default. So that's really easily done. It's every, so by default, there's already a um, region. There's a left, a right, a header, a footer, and a footer region. And so those are there by default. So one of the things we can do is we can replace those values. So for left over here, we can simply put in for the content dollar $left. So they're the exact same names. For right over here, we can put in the content dollar $right. For the middle section, the content, uh, and I need to put it in a PHP tag, absolutely. Question mark, PHP, print dollar $left. That would have been interesting. Of course, we would have noticed that right away when it said dollar $left on the screen. Um, and then question mark php dollar content is the middle one. Okay, and one more. Okay, and question mark php print dollar right. And so if we do just that and reload this. Ta-da! There you see we've got some interesting content. It's not the prettiest right now, and we're not going to probably... Oh, well, one of our problems is it's um, <clears throat> white text on white. <laughs> um, so, so, so that is in these three sections. I, could, uh, I guess I put the body text as what I made white or something. The, oh, this is the container. I should have just put it in the header. So let's go fix that, and then... Container. Oh, style sheet. CSS styles. Um, where's my white? So it is in just the header. Do I have my header around everything? Um, Paragraph. Is there a paragraph color? No. Okay. Let's try one more time. See if that fixed it. Doesn't. 
All right. They're link items? Ah, that's the link. Okay, I see the hover. Here's an FFF. That's probably it. One should set up their own CSS files in advance before doing a demonstration. There you go. Okay, so um, we're at 456, so I'm not going to be able to go through a whole lot more. But there are a couple of things out of here that we can get. Um, for instance, over here on the slogan, we could replace that with dollar site slogan. The logo is obviously already in place over here in the menu section. It's a little more complicated. There's something called dollar primary links. So you could put dollar primary links and print that there in place of the menu. Um, and not directly, but if we actually go look in, again, in the... In, in the default code in, say, Garland or, or someplace else. Um, sites, themes, Garland, page.pt, primary links. So actually what we want to print is this, print, and there's a function f for telling it what classes can be assigned to and what links, and that way you can easily change the CSS code. But you would put that in place of of the one, two, three, four, five, you would print that value instead, and that would print that there. And so that's basically, I mean, very, very quickly, that's uh, putting a basic theme together. The other important piece that would come that we could add later is the ability to, um, is the ability to, <clears throat> uh, to actually begin changing the variables and how they operate, and that would be in a template.php file. Yes, sir? Okay. I haven't. I yeah. played around with some tools where I've sliced and diced, but uh, not it's, Photoshop. It's really nice, and it makes it so that you can give your designers sort of this, uh, um, you know, these columns to work and say, hey, just just fit what you need to in these columns. And in the sample, it's going to be on line 60. You can see how everything very cleverly fits within those boundaries. And it lets your designers essentially design something that fits right within your framework automatically. Okay. All right, gentlemen, that's all I have, and ladies. Um, yes, sir? Have you ever used the 960 theme for Drupal? I did. Um, actually started working on it, and what I wanted to do, my goal was not to use the theme, but to show how to, how to do it from scratch. But yeah, you can, you can load in the theme and then just start modifying it to, to, to your needs. I, would it create sub-themes off of that, or would you modify the theme directly? Um, what I did was modify the theme directly. I didn't really work with the sub-themes and not real familiar with that at this point. Yeah, and there's also the 960 fluid theme, which is kind of cool. I really like that. Thanks. All right.